more importantly, this is Beth who runs the Queensland Nurses Union. And the Queensland Nurses Union are out here tonight uh, in Fortitude Valley organising a meeting to support the continued operation of Biala, which runs a sexual health service. We've done so for the last, what, 25 years? It's fantastic, except the Liberal National Party government are putting an axe through it at the moment. And that's why we've got here this evening. Uh, Beth, what's the QNU doing? QNU is running a community-based campaign to make sure that Viola stays open, Kevin. We're engaging with the community, we're holding functions like this. We have to get this decision reversed. This is just one of many similar cuts across the state. We've seen an axe taken to primary, preventative and community health care, as well as aged care that's run by the state government. This is absolutely outrageous. The state government's basically saying if they think it should be run by the feds, well then the feds can fund it. We are campaigning our hearts out because this is basically about a privatisation agenda. The community will pay more if this actually goes ahead. So we're uh, in their boots and all, Kevin, running an anti-privatisation campaign to make sure that our public health services stay public and that access to health care is based on need and not ability to pay. So people power is what's important and the QNU is out there back in the community. Well done. Email. Thanks very much and uh, thank you all for um, inviting me and, uh, and Jackie and the QNU and others for uh, putting together an important community meeting. I was listening with a lot of admiration to what David said before um, because I've observed this journey over the last uh, 30 years uh, that we've been wrestling with HIV AIDS but more broadly uh, with other STIs for a long, long time. And you need to ask yourself this question, why is it that uh, in Australia uh, we have uh, one of the lowest HIV rates in the world? The reason we have one of the lowest HIV rates in the world is because clinicians, clinics, professionals and governments step in to make a difference. That's the reason. It doesn't happen because magically it turned out that way. People chose to run public campaigns, awareness campaigns. Clinicians stepped into the breach. Our scientists and our researchers stepped into the breach. Centres like this were established right across uh, the major centres of the country. And as a result, Australia has been looked upon, has been looked upon around the world as a world leader. When I was foreign minister a year or so ago, I was at the General Assembly and the, uh, our permanent representative, Gary Quinlan, chaired a General Assembly session to bring about the 2011 Declaration on HIV AIDS. The first time we got effective consensus from across the world. Why do they pick Australia to chair it? Because we have cred. They believe us. They think we're serious about these things and we've got the runs on the board. So my overall point is this. The reason why we have the low infection incidents that we do is because all of us have made a difference. But the cent central part of that is because clinicians and clinics have made a difference as part of a preventative healthcare program. So I ask myself this question, why has the Newman Liberal National Party government chosen right up front and in a huge way to take the axe to the delivery of sexual health services here in Brisbane. Why have they picked on this outfit in particular? I could suggest a number of reasons. Maybe they find that this area of health, sexual health, all too difficult still to deal with. But as others have said, I thought we diselected Joe Bjorka Peterson's mob back in 1989. Perhaps they're now back in office. But you know something? I, the reason I was late here this evening is I've just been attending a community meeting on uh, the south side 
where, without consultation, the State Education Minister has unilaterally announced the merger of one high school with another, quite apart from clogging off the playing fields from a whole bunch of local schools. They thought they could ram this through. They thought they could ram it through without any community reaction. What was interesting tonight is that we had the Minister, Langbrook for Education, last Friday announcing this will happen. No consultation. Tonight, Tuesday night, four or five days later, there is a packed community hall over there at Cooparoo. Langbrook, the State Minister, is standing up and saying, well, we'll now have six months consultation and we're not sure what the future of the school will be. In other words, he's backed down at least one step. I say that because there is power, there's power, there's power in the people. And when you come together like this, this is basically now not an exercise in health policy. Regrettably, folks, this is now an exercise in politics. And we've got to demonstrate to this state government that we, the people, who support those who need these services, intend to roll this decision back. There's no point us being here as a celebration of uh, folks who have a common set of views saying it's wrong. We've got to organise ourselves politically to make sure this is turned on its head. <laughs> Langbrook, the Education Minister, is in Cooparoo tonight is because he fears what will happen to the future of the state Liberal National Party Member of Parliament. I ask this question, where is the local member from the government, the Liberal National Party government here this evening? Is there one? He couldn't make it. He couldn't make it. Who is it? <laughs> okay, so Robert, the local member for which seat? <laughs> Robert, the member for Brisbane Central, ain't here. You're all our job, our job is to make life hell for him. <laughs> The former member for Brisbane Central is here. Where are you? <laughs> Theresa Gambara, the Federal Liberal National Party member for Brisbane, is not here. <laughs> and we, the Feds, put money into these programs, as Shane has just indicated, <laughs> right across the country. Why isn't she here this evening? Does she not care about her constituents who need these services? Her electorate covers the valley. It covers this entire set of suburbs in inner city Brisbane. Where is she? And what I'd say is the next member for Brisbane is here, Fiona McNamara. So folks, this is not an exercise in public policy. The public policy arguments are clear to anyone with half a brain. Even to Lawrence Springborg. The pu public policy arguments are clear. This is no longer an exercise in public policy. We know this service should continue. We know of anything this service should be expanded. So we keep the infection rates low in this country. It's no longer an exercise in public policy. It is an exercise in politics and organisation and causing sufficient pain to this state Liberal National Party government and to Abbott's mob that they change the decision. Thank you. <laughs>